in our earlier class we have seen that uh, uh, the relationship between uh, relationship between uh, stress uh, bond stiffness equiatomic distance and strain so we have termed this as not upon or not as uh, young's modulus so you can see here that uh, when i'm stretching uh, my material in elastic region uh, the bonds are getting stretched and when i release that the bonds are getting relaxed and going going to its uh, to their original positions so what i can say that uh, when i'm stretching uh, my r is stretching and getting relaxed similarly the volume is changing here okay you can say that the volume is getting changed okay so i can clearly uh, say that uh, in elastic deformation there is a change in lattice parameter this like r not okay uh, which will lead to the change in the lattice volume okay so however small there is a change in volume during elastic deformation okay so if someone ask you is there any volume change during elastic deformation yes there is little volume change in during elastic deformation uh, what about the volume change in plastic deformation we will see that we will see that when we discuss about plastic deformation in detail so uh, let's understand the state of stress at a point uh, we have I have initially told you that we uh, very generic uses of stress is force upon area but the question arises when I say a stress uh, uh, subjected to a material or a sample will this stress remains constant or uniform throughout uh, uh, at every point in the sample okay is the state of stress same throughout the deforming body okay that's the question okay so the concept of stress is evolved through centuries and it took a lot of great minds to work on to coming to the concept of stress okay so as a uh, stress is a response to a material uh, of a material to an external imposed strain so as i have mentioned you when we discussed about the behavior of materials that stress is a response okay to an external stimuli called strain okay rather uh, you can find definitions of stress such as resistance to external strain or applied stress so uh, this concept of stress is much uh, difficult uh, because uh, stresses is a resistance uh, it is an internal resistance of a material to uh, externally acting forces so as Euler pointed out that within the interior whether where neither eye or nor experiment can reach so uh, it is con it is quite difficult to comprehend the concept of stress okay but whatever the concept of stress which we are using uh, in our uh, present day science uh, is brought by Augustine Cauchy uh, uh, we have in, got introduced to an uh, elastic constant Young's modulus earlier. Uh, now we will get introduced to uh, uh, another elastic constant called Poisson ratio. So you you have been familiar with this stress strain curve. So the solid one is uh, an engineering stress strain curve, whereas dotted one is uh, the flow curve or uh, true strain, true stress, true stress, true strain curve. Okay. So let's consider a point on this flow curve or true stress, true strain curve. Uh, let's consider this point. So the strain corresponding to this stress, uh, state of stress at this point uh, will be this. So I call it as uh, epsilon t or total strain. Okay. As I have seen that uh, this this point here has reached by uh, a plus elastic deformation also plastic deformation so this total strain must be comprises of two components one one component will be elastic component and another component will be plastic component so i can write this as total strain uh, comprises of two components that is epsilon e i call it as elastic component and epsilon p i call it as plastic component now what is the contribution of this elastic and plastic components at in this total uh, strain okay so how will you do that uh, you know the young's modulus uh, material that is a uh, one elastic constant related to stress and strain so 
I know this I know the stress at this point I know elastic constant uh, that is Young's modulus I can find it out uh, what is a plus uh, what is an elastic component in this how I do that I draw a parallel line to this elastic region and where it intersect to the strain axis this region or this uh, this recovered part is an elastic component of strain okay and what will be the plastic so remaining remaining will be the plastic component of the strain now uh, you do one thing what is find out what is a plastic component throughout this flow curve sigma versus e and then try to figure out what is uh, a relation between or uh, plot this sigma versus epsilon p in uh, this you do it in meantime we'll we'll reach to uh, we'll discuss this uh, sometime later in this course so in meantime you find out what is how this curve look like so as we deform material uh, elastics elastically uh, let's say you have a material like this uh, your coordinate axis I mentioned X Y and Z in this fashion and I put a tensile load uh, along my X axis okay uh, and material gets subsequently deformed or elongates in this fashion okay along X direction so what I see is that uh, if I see the cross section of this what is happening is that uh, the material is along getting along X direction but it is getting contracted along Y and Z direction okay so if I take a, a top view of this uh, uh, of this sample what I see is that the material is getting contracted along Y and Z direction okay so it is elongating elongated in X direction but uh, the cross section area that is Z uh, is decreasing okay so I call this strain as longitudinal strain okay and I call the strain along this Z and Y uh, as, as, as a transfer strain okay so for an isotropic material the uh, this this two transfer strain along Z and Y direction uh, will be equal okay as the material being isotropic because the property will not be dependent on direction it, it behaves the same way in both the directions so uh, for as for isotropic material this uh, strain at in transverse direction uh, along z direction and y direction will be same now i introduce a, a poisson ratio which is uh, uh, which relates this lateral strain i can call it as a lateral strain also the lateral strain with a longitudinal strain okay so i relate this uh, with a uh, with an elastic constant called poisson ratio okay so I define the Poisson ratio as uh, a ratio of a transverse strain to a longitudinal strain or uh, ratio of lateral strain to the longitudinal strain I put a negative sign because when I elongate in this direction uh, when I put a tensile force in the direction the material gets elongated but here it experiences a compressive stress uh, or get contracted in this direction that's why I put a negative sign so this strain is a, uh, is a negative okay so the Poisson ratio will be always positive okay so so what does this uh, relation indicates that when I have an elongation in longitudinal direction there is a contraction in the transverse direction okay so this is the significance of a negative sign so for most of the uh, metals materials this Poisson ratio uh, varies from 0 to 0.5 okay so last but not least we have got introduced to this Poisson ratio as a ratio of uh, 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 transfer strains to the longitudinal strain negative of transfer strains to the longitudinal strain so uh, uh, this most of the people pronounce it as poison but uh, the actual pronunciation is Poisson. I think with this I will end here.